So um, I wanted to introduce a system that I'm working on. Um, I'll call it um, a DAW Design Controller or just DDC, which is uh, in essence a um, Arduino sketch which holds the framework for uh, making a controller based on putting all the switches in a matrix and then just declaring your switches. And this system has a lot of cool functions to it. Uh, it has support for um, regular encoders, seven position buttons, uh, four bit encoders, um, resistor ladder, uh, switches like the, these classic uh, 12 position switches, um, dual clutches, single clutch, uh, neutral button, switching button modes, and um, setting uh, byte points with your uh, rotary switches. Um, and best of all is that it sends, uh, it sends the, the information about the state of all the switches uh, directly to SimHub. Um, and then it's sort of deciphered in my plugin and uh, returned as properties. And it's, it's really simple to use. So just to show some of the functions, I've made this um, this graphic just showing my wheel. Um, this is my this is my uh, twelve position switch. This is a resistor ladder uh, switch. Um, it now has uh, twelve positions. It's a true twelve position switch. So uh, the position, the physical position of the knob, matches the button press. Um, then I have a switch mapped to be. Um, well, on my I wheel, I have uh, uh, a couple of extra switches on the back side. Um, I've mapped this one. You can map anything, but I've mapped this one to be a modifier button. So, pressing this one and rotating uh, this switch will send it into an incremental switch mode. So now it's an incremental encoder, plus minus. Um, doing the same thing again sets it into a um, DDS mode which is made for my dashboard. So this is a, a sort of pseudo tw uh, 24 position switch with a locking mode, which means <laughs> it sort of has uh, these 12 positions and then I can boost it up to an, an upper layer of 12 positions. Um, and in any position, I have a, a button to sort of block it and then I can use it as an incremental encoder while still uh, being in that position. And then I can release it and go back. Uh, this is beautiful for using sort of a menu system, uh, which is in my dashboard, um, uh, to, to just use one knob uh, to, to set the, um, the brake bias, um, uh, traction control, ABS, etc. Um, so there are modes for other buttons as well, um, switching between push button and, and latching buttons. Uh, this uh, toggle button can be switched into being a, um, let's see, there, a uh, pulse button. So now button number four gives a pulse instead of uh, being a latching button. Now it's a latching button or a latching toggle again. Um, so yeah, the next thing is, uh, the dual clutches, um, it has support for, uh, simply adding two clutches to work as dual clutches. And these also have different modes. So the basic static mode, now the right point is set to 40. Uh, there's a defined master clutch and a slave clutch. So. However you use them, the slave clutch is always at the byte point, the master is at 100%. But the same way you can use the modifier button to switch this into the next mode, which is a dynamic low mode. Dynamic low mode, um, the paddles work the same. Uh, holding one paddle will, will put you at the byte point. Uh, putting uh, both paddles will get you to 100%. Um, in the dynamic high mode, uh, it's the same, but but both paddles go to 100%. And you need to push, uh, press both paddles first um, to sort of activate 
byte point and releasing one will get you will get you there and the next one is using this as a break and a throttle yep um in addition you have a neutral button which will in this case it's defined as this button uh it will just pu push the clutch in completely um and if you don't need neutral button you can change the neutral button to being a regular momentary switch button now it's a neutral button again um so setting the byte point um the same way you have a defined byte button byte point button in this case is button number six it works as a regular button but pushing this and using a, a rotary encoder will engage sort of byte point mode and then you can add up and reduce by 10 press again to add or reduce by one and then by 0.1 and then again now we're out of byte point mode and and use these switches as normal um so uh, these are some of the features um the benefits of this uh obviously uh, you have a lot of cool functions um as you can see on the sketch uh this is all the code really that i had to write to add these buttons to the wheel the rest is sort of the framework that i created uh, so it's easy to use and having all buttons and encoders in a matrix allows you to um, to have a lot of uh, buttons uh, on a single pro micro or a similar board so that's that's it for now i'm still working a bit on this will soon be released and uh thanks for watching